Today we're going to look at a notorious calculus problem. One that I generally either show or give as maybe like a bonus type or a challenge type exercise to all of my Calculus 2 classes. Okay, so the question is, does the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 over n converge? Or I guess, does it diverge? And what makes this problem interesting? Well, the harmonic series, in other words, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, it famously diverges. And so this is the sum that really rubs calculus students the wrong way. Everyone feels like this should converge, but it in fact does not converge. But then a version of the P-series test can be written as follows. For every positive number epsilon, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 1 plus epsilon converges. So in other words, if this exponent right here is fixed at some number which is bigger than 1, strictly bigger than 1, we have convergence. But the important thing is that this is fixed at something bigger than one. Notice that our sum is somewhere in the middle of these two. So the exponent is most definitely always bigger than one, but it's not fixed. In fact, that exponent is getting closer and closer and closer to one as n gets larger and larger and larger. And that's what makes this kind of a little bit nebulous as to what the answer is immediately. Because we're between a series that diverges and a series that converges. Okay, so let's maybe look how we show that this, well, does what it does. So we're gonna do this problem two different ways. One is by using the regular comparison test and the other one will use the limit comparison test. Okay, so let's start with our solution using the regular comparison test, which will involve the following claim which is for all natural numbers n, n to the one over n is always less than two. And thus, if we take the reciprocal, we have one over n to the one over n is always bigger than one half. So how might we do this? Well, we're gonna do this with binomial expansion, which I think is a really nice approach. So let's take two to the n and write it as, well, one plus one to the n. I mean, we're really doing revolutionary stuff here. But now we're going to think about this as x plus 1 to the n, where we set x equal to 1. But now by binomial expansion formula, we know that this is the sum as k equals, let's see, 0 up to n of the binomial coefficient n choose k times x to the k, well, evaluated at x equals 1. Now let's write out the first couple of terms of this. And, you know, while I do that, I will plug in x equals 1. So the first term will be 1. The second term will be n because n choose 1 is n. The third term will be n times n plus 1 over 2. That's like n choose 2, and then so on and so forth. But now the important thing is that all of these are positive numbers, so if I drop any of them, I end up with something smaller. So I'm gonna drop everything except for n. So that means that what I have right here is bigger than n. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have two to the n is bigger than n, but now, simply taking the nth root of both sides here will give us two is bigger than n to the one over n. I guess using the fact that the nth root function is an increasing function, but I think that's pretty clear. And now we're essentially ready to do it. So let's start with our sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n to the one plus one over n, and then we'll rewrite this as the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n to the one over n times one over n. Of course, that's using exponent rules for multiplication when you have the same base. But now we'll use our claim and replace this with the number two, 
building an inequality. So if we replace that thing in the denominator with the number two, then I end up with something, let's see, that will be smaller. So this whole thing is bigger than, well, I'm gonna bring the half out front, and then I have the sum as n goes from one to infinity of what's left over, which is simply one over n. But we know that that famously diverges by what we were called before. So, and it in fact diverges infinitely, which is pretty clear because it's the sum of positive terms. So let's see, what do we have here? Well, we have our sum is bigger than something that diverges. In other words, it's like bigger than or equal to infinity. But because we have that, this thing must diverge. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our second approach. So our second approach will be to use a, a version of the limit comparison test with the harmonic series one over n, which like I said, we know diverges. So that means we're gonna look at the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n over one over n times one over n to the one over n, where I factored that like denominator as we did before. Okay, so let's maybe quickly observe that this turns into the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the one over n. Now, I'm gonna set that limit equal to L just because at the moment it's an indeterminate form, but it's like an exponential type of indeterminate form, which means we probably need to apply some sort of logarithm to get it into a form that we can perhaps use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so let's apply the logarithm to both sides. We have the natural log of L is now equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n times the natural log of n. But I'm gonna write that as the natural log of n over n. But now as n goes to infinity, both the numerator as well as the denominator approach infinity. So that means I have an indeterminate form which is ripe to use L'Hopital's rule. So taking the derivative of the numerator and the denominator, I'm left with the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n, which is clearly equal to zero. But now if the natural log of L is equal to zero, well, what does that mean that L is? Exponentiating both sides, we have L is equal to one. But now let's recall the statement of the limit comparison test, which says if this type of limit exists, is bigger than zero and is finite, then the two series do the same thing. So since this satisfies these rules, we know that since the harmonic series diverges, our series diverges as well. And that's our second solution. So if you've enjoyed this video, maybe think about subscribing to the channel. It would really help us out a lot. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.